Hello my friends and welcome back to our Byzantine colony. Last episode we got this amazing tavern you can see behind me built. It looks fantastic. But this episode I've been made aware that we are very very far behind. Basically three episodes now and we haven't actually done that much. So what we're going to do this episode is have a very quick fire episode. We're going to get a lot done, loads of progress and we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Before we begin though, this colony needs a name and the most popular decision was, wait for it, can't wait, <laughs> Constanstinople. There we go. So that's what the colony's called. Thank you for all your comments, suggesting some names. There were some real humdingers. Some of you wanted a Greek name. There were some amazing decisions, but democracy wins. Constantinople is what was voted for. That is a terrible name. Well, Dunny, your name literally means toilet. So we're going to start the ball rolling by grabbing out the build tool and building some decorations. Now, I'm very excited to see what the Byzantine build style has for us for building our harbour. The main goal here is to get a bridge so we can get over to the other side of the river. That's going to unlock the entire uh, which north bank and give us loads of room to build on our colony. Okay. Now, before we put down the seawall and the bridge, I'm going to mention that the creator of the Byzantine pack, Spermanti, made a comment in one of the videos saying we weren't using the latest version. And to get Byzantine latest version, you have to go to Planet Minecraft. So I put a link in the description where you can pick that up. And basically, you can put the blueprints into where your local blueprints are saved. And if you take a look here, yeah, it appears in local next to my name. So there it is, Byzantine 2. And it's important to do this sooner rather than later because this adds a whole bunch of stuff. Now we're looking in infrastructure for the bridge. Yeah, I want to see what this bad boy looks like. Now there's a whole bunch of these, but to help us plan this, we're going to build something that we usually get a quest for. Now I don't think Jay Hoobies has that quest for us just yet. So yeah, we want to make the builder's goggles. These are going to help us visualize the decorations as they go down so we can plan and put them next to each other seamlessly. At least I think. Not too tricky to make, we have all of these things. So let's get back to the boat and craft one of these. So we've got the gold nuggets, we'll put those on the side. The iron goes up there. I think we're going to need actually the glass to be panes of glass, so we'll make that. There we go, and we should have all the bits. Copy this over, boom, the builder's goggles. We'll slot these on and see what this does. So with the builder's goggles, we can basically see what buildings will look like before they're built. So that should, in theory, make making decorations much, much easier. But we're gonna take a look at all of the bridge sections from the top of this ship to see if we can plan this out. So this is a bridge main pier, but as you can see, there are a lot of options here. Now you can start with wood, which might be a good place for us to start, but no, it's not a good place for us to start because we want a really impressive looking colony as soon as possible. And I think this is mostly deep slate, diorite and granite, which we have loads of, so this shouldn't be unachievable. So I don't think we want a pier. That's not what we want just yet. What we might want though is a span. What's this? Ah, now this is where things get a bit juicy. This is a big old bridge. Look at this mother trucker. There's also a ramp to span. Okay, right, so you can start low and get higher. There's a ramp to span foot, so if you wanted to go deeper into the sea or the river, you can do that. Ramp to span rise. Ah, yeah, stilts. Amazing. There's a ramp start. Whoa. And a ramp steep. If you've got a big bridge, if you want to have, like, quite a high bridge. And I think we might want to do that. But we're going to connect the bridge to a wall. So let's go back and take a look at some of the walls. So we're looking for harbour, seawall, and here we go. So there's the long, swivel that around. Okay, right, so the seawall actually comes right up against the sea. It doesn't actually climb that high. There's a short version for when you just need a little bit. There's a T section. Ooh. Now the British inside me is screaming for tea, but uh, actually I'm more of a coffee man. There's also a dredge section, so if you want to make your own body of water, you can have your builders do that. Crazy. Corner outside, corner inside, corner diagonal, and uh, wow, some big diagonal bits. So let's take a look at the size of this bridge, because I'm wondering if this length here is the same length as the length along there on the town hall. That'd make things very nice and neat and easy. And easy isn't something Mine Connollys usually does, so moment of truth. No, it looks like that doesn't quite match up, but we can make it one wider and, well, yeah, that's close enough to matching up. So we'll push this over this way. 
Now we don't want a shallow ramp, what we want is a steep ramp. So let's go and find that. Infrastructure bridge, main, and we want a ramp steep. There we go. Now this is going to be much more manageable for us. So we have a nice position for the bridge, but before we even put this into position, we're going to have to do a road that connects it. Now some of you guys suggested that we have a grand plaza outside the town hall. And I'm not sure, we don't actually have that much room this side of the river. I think maybe the other side of the river is a good place for the plaza, so we'll save that for there. What I reckon though, we'll have a road that goes up to this bridge and a seawall down the bottom. But the roads that come with Byzantine are a bit small, so I think what we're actually looking for is an avenue. Yeah, here we go. This is a big beast, but I reckon it's worth doing. So the first thing we want to do is plan ahead. We're going to have a straight avenue that comes all the way along here, along the coast. And the other side of that avenue is going to be the seawall, which I think we're going to use retaining walls for, because it looks like they look a bit neater. So we'll bring this over here. There we go, looking pretty good. And we can put trees inside these dirt bins as well. Maybe mahogany to make things look nice. Now we're going to equip the builder's goggles. Press go on this. Tick and assign it to J. Sure, why not? Now, because we're wearing the builder's goggles, can we see the building? Look at this. Amazing. Yeah. So the builder goggles work and now we can plan the decorations properly. This is going to look amazing. And it's also really cool because now you can see what it will look like eventually as well. So with the, the first part of the bridge in position, let's try and put some of the struts down. But do you know what? Before we finish this bridge, this is all going to be way too much work for only one builder. So it is time. It's only the fourth building, but it's going to have to be done. We're going to have to get a second builder. So let's go and grab a builder's hut from the boat. So if memory serves, a builder's hut was pretty simple. We'll need wood and I think we'll need doors. The doors go there, the wood goes around the edge, and then with the build tool on the top, we have a builder's hut. Now this is probably going to be the first of many. There's so many buildings to do in Byzantine, and there's also so many decorations that I think two builders isn't going to cut it. What we might do is go to four. So basically what I want to do with this builder's hut, I'll get the build tool out right now, is see if I can match it to this builder's hut as well, because there's a nice road that runs through these builders huts. So if we can have them in like a line, that might look pretty cool. Sun's out, guns out, mate. I beg your pardon. <laughs> oh no. Sun's out, guns out indeed. So what we're looking to do here is uh, basically get these blocks on exactly the same spot. There we go. That's glitching like a mother trucker, which means we're in the correct position. I think. Are we in the correct position? Yeah, no, we are now. Look at this. Right. So we're just going to move this over now. Like so. Look at this building at level five. And so what should happen is these buildings will match onto each other and create a pretty cool look. Here you go. This is what it's going to look like in the end. Yeah. Oh, that looks amazing. Yeah, I love it. Okay. So remember this. You can build a builder's hut at any time. You don't need to worry if your existing builder has a lot on his plate. So it was going to be Nicky Bravin before, but we went for Jay because Jay's a man. And long live the patriarchy, am I right? But it's time to smash that glass ceiling and get Nikki on the case. Boom. Because it's her time to shine. So let's put down one more avenue over on this side of things. Avenue, and we're going to go for straight. Connect it to the other one, and honestly, the lack of symmetry here is going to bother me until the end of time. Oh no, if that bridge was one block over, this would be perfectly symmetrical. Whew. Well, you know what? It's got to be done. So we're going to right click here. Press the tick, assign this to J, build building, because now we're going to go over to J's builder's hut and cancel that bridge. And you can do this at any time before he started work or even midway through. So over here on the work orders, oh, which one was it? If you hover over, yeah, here we go. Hover over and it tells you straight, short, ramp steep. Cancel that sucker, Jay. We've got bigger plans. And boom, it's gone. Oh man, so useful. So what I want to do is a whole video dedicated to builder tips and tricks. Ways you can speed up your builder, little things I wish I knew before I started. Basically a one-stop guide that'll help you get going and work out how to get the best and most from your builders. 
So here we go. Now the avenue is in position. We can plan where this bridge is going to go. And look at this. The bridge lands perfectly between two long sections of avenue and one short. That's amazing. Okay, so we'll sink this down and that's going to be the spot. So what about a straight up span? What is, oh yeah, now this is what I'm talking about. I think this is what we want. It's not quite big enough for our boat to get through, but it looks a lot neater and tidier. So let's shift this into position and make sure it all lines up. Oh man, this is going to be amazing. Boom, I reckon that's good. So we'll tick on that. So let's see what the pack has to offer. But man, Spumanti, you are a genius. I'm in love with your Byzantine style. And if you've watched this far into the video, I want you to put in the comment section a huge thank you to Spamanti for the amazing job he's done on this pack. So here's a look at the build so far. We've got Jay working on those roads, the avenue, and then Nikki is going to build this bridge. Oh man, it looks so incredible. But let's not stop there. We're going to expand the avenue down here a bit and also add a retaining wall to border this avenue. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like when it's complete. This is going to look really, really, really cool. It does mean we're going to have to start getting our other buildings up in the levels sooner rather than later, because I really want them to match the style that we have going on with these avenues and bridges. But this looks crazy incredibly good. So what I'm going to do now is go around, get up all of my diorite, all of my deep slate, all of that granite, and start making the things the builders are going to need for this build, but credit to Spermanti, he hasn't used too many different types of blocks here, and all of this is kind of easy to get. So let's do it. Okay, so step number one was going to be building the first builder's hut. Very simple, level one, not much to shout about. And it went up really quick, which wasn't surprising. Now digging out the area for the avenue was taking Jay a long time and we had to supply our guys with loads and loads and loads of stone shovels. But definitely well worth it. The avenues are really going to help bring the colony to life and give our builders a safe way to get down the street. Now we split the builds up. Jay is working on the avenues while Nikki is exclusively working on the bridge. It's a big challenge because Nikki is a fresh builder and consequently, her stats are a lot lower than Jay's. So I'm expecting her to be a little bit slower. However, she's still putting this bridge up in record time. In fact, I think she was even finished before Jay. So now we come around here, near to the boat, and we can see Jay just finishing up those last final two bits of avenue. But man, does this need a lot of deep slate? Not huge amounts of granite or diorite, but deep slate is the one that we've really diminished our stocks of. And now to finish it off, the side walls on the avenues. Now I used the retaining walls, which you can also find in Byzantine decorations, because I think they have a better feel than the sea walls. So here we go, the almost finished bridge and the avenues. Now check this out, the avenues have a really sweet sewer system underneath. So yeah, that looks pretty amazing if I do say so myself, but we've got a big problem now. We've run out almost completely of the materials we used to make these walls, roads and bridge. And that's not a problem, it was going to happen at some point. But it's time for us to finally confront the demons of limited storage. So we're going to be doing two things to make sure we've got loads of storage going forwards. What we're going to be doing is we can't get a computer yet. Computers are pretty high end. What we're going to be going for instead is some functional storage drawers. They're very cool. There's a whole bunch of them. They come in all different colors, shapes and sizes. You can upgrade them and later on you can link them to a computer so we can still keep the storage space. But they're a very visual way of being able to see what you have in your pack. And we're also going to be upgrading the dank, because while this is great at level 1, it can be even better. But to do that, we're going to need 8 blocks of redstone. And that's not a small amount. So I'll grab myself some sticks and make myself some iron picks. I reckon 3 or 4 should do. 
It's always worth making loads of pickaxes out of iron because you're gonna get loads when you go on a mining trip anyway. So I've got this, I've got my dank, I've got my backpack as well. Loads of space. But wait, I think there's something else we can do. We can probably upgrade our backpack as well. So we go into the crafting bench, we put the backpack in here, we surround it by iron ingots, and then we have the iron backpack. We surround that with gold. Now we have a golden backpack. Let's put it on our back, boom, and see what this gets us. Oh my god, loads of room, and also extra upgrade slots. But these upgrades are kind of expensive. Golden carrot, golden apple, ender pearl, glycerin melon. Yeah, some of them are less expensive, but oh my god, yeah. Nothing worth bothering with at the moment because it's primarily for storage. So we've got the backpack, the picks, the dank, loads of space. Let's go do it. We're going to go into the mine and go hunting for redstone. So looking for redstone, but we're so speedy with our new boots as well that we can kind of ignore monsters. Just dig up stuff and go before anything can touch us. Now what else is on our shopping list? Well, kind of everything. Lapis lazuli is very valuable. Also, while we're here, we use a lot of deep slate, so let's just grab a bunch of that too. Oh my god, diamonds. What a day to be alive. Get in my backpack. Oh wow, look at this stuff. So raw redstone from Greg Tech. If you put this in a smelter, each one becomes five redstone dust. That's crazy. And in that case, we've definitely got enough redstone now. Look at this. So time to head up top. So where are we going to put these storage drawers? Well, I'm going to empty these racks. Ooh, eat this cake. Why not? Oh, delicious. Nothing better than cake for breakfast. And we're going to put the storage drawers in a big section over here. They're going to create loads of storage space for us. There we go. Goodbye racks. Now, we don't need to worry too much about wasting these racks. Yes, they're free storage right now, but we can always use them in future builds. Almost every building requires a, a rack at least in its inventory, as well as its building requirements. So don't worry, these racks are going to go to good use. And there we go, a massive space. Okay, now to craft us some drawers. Now we'll put the chests in these corners. And fill these other blocks with wood. And boom. Oh wow, yeah, you get four per craft. So time to put these drawers up against the boat wall. There we go. Oh yeah, this is going to create loads and loads and loads of space for us. Oh my god, and each one of these small cubes can hold, I think, about 500 of one item. So thinking about the important building materials here on the colony, that's going to be loads. But why stop there? We can do better. We're looking for the long game here, so we'll make some copper dust, smelt that up. So while that's smelting, let's take a look at functional storage. And here it is. This is the mod. This is everything you can do. You can have two by two chests, you can have two drawers, or you can have just a solo drawer for storing one particular item in big quantities. You can also have compacting drawers, and if you want to, you can even store liquid in a drawer. Not very realistic. I can't remember the last time I put a handful of water inside one of my drawers, but you know what? If you can do it in Minecraft, why not? There's also upgrades, and that's what we're talking about. We're going to start with the copper upgrade. It multiplies the block item storage by eight. 8 times 500, that's 4,000. That's amazing. Copper upgrade, boom, there we go. Now let's see how this works. If we right click on one of the chests, and for the sake of making things nice and neat, we're going to start at the top left, right click here, and you can see in the bottom left, there's a little copper card. That means this drawer can hold loads more items. So we make some redstone blocks. Here we go, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's just make all of it into like redstone blocks because it's a good way to store redstone. Now we take the dank, surround it with this redstone, and there we go, the redstone, dank two. The next upgrade is gold blocks, and that's a little bit pricey for us right now, but even the dank level two can store thousands and thousands of materials. So with that in mind, we have a goal. We're completely empty on the big time supplies. Let's go on a big old trip to gather the very core essentials of this mod. So once again, my friends, it's that time in the episode where we slow down, take a breather. And this episode has been so progress heavy that I think this is pretty needed. So the core materials, like I said, it's granite, deep slate, andesite, and diorite. I know that there's granite over here in this Badlands biome, and that's also probably a great place for us to find andesite, but we 
should keep our eyes peeled on this exposed rock as we're floating down the river because you never know when you might find a rogue vein of andesite. And it looks like we have arrived, my friends. No diorite or andesite along the way, but that's A-OK -okay because we came here for granite, or as I like to call it, orange gold. Yeah, look at this. So how much granite does this thing hold? 877, and it's still not full. Basically, the dank, each one of these slots can hold 1,000 of a certain item, so it's actually really crazy. So there we go, over a thousand granite, great stuff. Next stop, we're going to go and find some diorite and andesite. Time to get back in the boat and head home. So we're going deep, deep down back into that mine of ours, because I do remember seeing some andesite and some diorite down here. That's where I got most of my last stuff, and that's where we'll find the rest. Look at this, 1,800 cobble deep slates, 1,300 andesite, 1,100 granite, and yeah, over 1,000 diorite. We're good to go. So here we are back at the boat. We return, and in great time. So let's put these items into this copper-enhanced storage drawer. And the dank is almost empty, these last few blocks, into this final drawer. There we go. Massive storage, amazing. And we're gonna to wanna to save the rest of these drawers for things we're gonna get a lot of, like honestly, some of the woods. So that brings us around to the final quality of life update we're gonna go through in this episode. And that is gonna be hopper botany pots. Here we go. Now we'll put these over on the left because it's gonna make them easier to craft. Boom. Now how do I do this again? Yeah, there we go. We'll need four of these for the four core trees that we're gonna use. But you know what, might as well make a fifth. Put these in the middle, put the terracotta around in a V shape, and there you go, you've got some botany pots. Now, this is where things get expensive because we need to make a hopper. Oh, let it grow. So to make a hopper, actually not too bad. We're gonna need chests in the middle and then a V shape of iron. So lots of jungle planks make these into chests, thank you very much. And then the V shape of iron. Here we go. Now, how many of these can we make? Four. Well, you know what? That works. Four of these mixed with the hopper pots. And we have four botany hopper pots. Amazing. What's the quest reward from that? Let's find out. It is another hopper. Okay. Don't mind if I do. In fact, we can make that final hopper pot now a botany one. So, yeah, I like the idea of keeping on theme here. So, we're going to put the botany hopper pots up on deck because trees need light to grow. It doesn't make any sense growing trees in your hold, even though we could. So we'll find a spot over here. I reckon this looks perfect. So down go the storage drawers. We're going to put one here, 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 and here. And I hate to ruin the decoration, but we're going to get rid of this grindstone and the log in the middle because it's going to make moving around the boat a little bit easier. So we're going to put the hopper pots on top like this. Very nice. Next up, we're going to have to use our shovel to find some dirt. Because of all the things I don't have, it's dirt. So here we go. Starting on the left, we're going to put the spruce in there. Just the one will do. Next up, we're going to put oak there. And in the final pot for today, we're going to put jungle. And I'm sure we'll put in the fourth pot. Birch isn't really used that much in this style but it might come in handy later on, so maybe birch is the one. But for now, these trees will grow and give us all of the materials we need. But we'll leave it to brew, because there's one more thing I wanted to do this episode, and that's going to be to upgrade these builders' huts and the town hall. Basically, one thing I don't like at the moment is how amazing this bridge and road looks compared to these shanty town, dirty old oak and spruce shacks we have going on over here. It's just so ugly. These things should at least be stone. 
And considering I spent so long just now gathering all the bits we need to upgrade stuff, it's time to take a look at what they need to get to level 2. So the Builder's Hut level 2. It needs a few cream bricks, and I think we have some spare. Some cream and some beige. A tripwire hook, which we can make again, no sweat. Item frame, that'll need some leather. Spruce plank shingles, a cauldron we have iron for. Scaffolding we have the bamboo for. Yeah, you know, after our recent trip, all of this seems very reasonable. I can go and grab this stuff. But the big question now is, what does the town hall require? Okay, so this is not so simple. This requires 245 cream bricks and also a lot of beige bricks. Everything else, very simple to grab, but it's the cream and the beige bricks that are going to be a bit of a tricky one for us right now. Okay, right, and now it all makes sense. This is why the game tells you you need loads of gravel, because it's gravel and the clay bricks that make the beige bricks. But what about cream bricks? Aha, uh -huh. so with cream bricks, it's sandstone and bricks, and obviously sandstone is just a whole bunch of sand compiled. Well, our diamond shovel thought he got away with it, but he hasn't. So we're going to go and grab ourselves as much sand and clay as we can find. Now, I don't want to ruin the river around our colony, so I'm not going to be digging around here for it. I'm just going to go a little bit further down river. Actually, no, I'm going to go up river, up over here, and we're going to grab some clay, some sand, and some gravel. Now I'm going to be cooking up clay, turning sand into sandstone, and getting these beige bricks, then using the architect's cutter to cut those beige bricks into the styles that we need. So once I have all that in order, I will give these to the builder and I will join you for the time-lapse build. We're getting both the builder's huts to level 2 and the town hall up there to level 2 as well. So the moment of truth, the race is on. Who's the fastest builder? There's only one way to find out. It seems like it shouldn't really be a competition. Jay's stats are actually much better. But, surprise, surprise, Nikki is the one who pulls ahead and completes her build first. But there are seconds to spare between them. And now moving on to the town hall. But before we go and build the town hall, we have to swoop down this river. There's one piece of the puzzle that we're missing. The town hall will need a bell. And why not pilfer this village's bell? Because these suckers won't be needing it. And here we go. Now, again, the town hall is huge. And I'm not sure why I thought this would be a quick upgrade. I think this thing in total took about one and a half hours, and that's just upgrading from level one to level two. I shudder to think how long it's going to take our guys to build the university and other big builds of Byzantine. But it's well worth doing. Getting these buildings up to stone level at least, so we have some of the beige bricks, is really going to help them pop and match up with the avenue and bridge style we have going on. Now, I'm not quite sure actually what to put in these grass tubs that are on the avenues. So if you have any ideas at home, put that in the comment section. But this build was just taking way too long. So let's cut to the finish and look at this beige bricks dome. Doesn't it look great? Okay, let's jump in. Let's look at these upgraded buildings. The town hall now at level 2. Amazing. Beige bricks everywhere. And it feels like this build has really been elevated. I'm kind of used to building styles making level 2 not a massive upgrade from level 1. But this is a real big change. Take a look. Lots more added. Lots of ways to get up to the top. And these beige bricks look amazing. I'm already in love with this style. And as we come over here, and I don't worry about this, we're going to trim up and put down some dirt, make this all make sense. But the level 2 builder's huts also look so much better than the level 1 ones. So if you're going Byzantine style, I strongly encourage you to get a source of beige bricks and cream bricks, which is uh, gravel, clay and sand, because they're going to come in so essential. And getting all the way up to level 2 from the get-go isn't too hard, 
but so, so, so worth it. This place looks amazing. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Mine Colony's Byzantine. We got loads done today. The Builder's Hut extra over there. Both of them up to level 2. The Town Hall to level 2. A bridge with three parts to it. And also these avenues and coastal walls. We also got some botany hopper pots to make getting wood easier for now. We are going to switch to foresters, so don't worry. We're staying loyal to mine colonies. It's just we need a little wood to get going. And also we built the storage drawers and got loads of the base core materials of Byzantine. And we upgraded our dank. Amazing progress. I don't exactly know where Dunny has gone, and I'm not sure if I should be worried about that. But until next time, take care.